how do these things fit together over time? First of all, if we just burn fossil fuels forever, even at a constant rate, so not with a rising rate, but if we kept the rate of fossil fuel combustion constant, then the climate risk grows without bound. We won't do that. I am absolutely confident that we will bring emissions to zero. It's a big political fight. It's technically possible. We will get there. We will get to a day where we have a big global celebration of net zero day where there's zero net emissions of CO2. And on that day, we have not solved the climate problem. We've just stopped it getting worse. Because climate is a stock and flow problem. Climate depends on the cumulative emissions of CO2. So when you bring emissions to zero, you don't make the problem go away. You just stop the problem incrementally getting worse. It gets better very, very slowly, but not on human time scales. It's one of the most important things to know about climate. And it's one of the central reasons that it is not, I think, sufficient to say that the only thing we should think about is cutting emissions. We have to cut emissions, but cutting emissions does not make this problem go away. So it is possible to do carbon removal, to gradually take carbon out of the atmosphere. And no question some of these methods could work, some of these negative emissions technologies. But I think they're all inherently expensive and slow. In the near term, it's for sure easier to spend the money to avoid emitting a ton of carbon than to emit a ton of carbon and recapture it. There's a lot of hype and excitement about carbon removal right now. And I founded this company that does direct air capture. I'm very excited about it. And we're sort of benefiting from this excitement. But I think the idea that we're going to use really large scale carbon removal very soon because somehow we can't get it together to cut emissions, that idea makes no sense. Because the reason we can't get it together to cut, get 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 to cut emissions is a political difficulty of agreeing to spend the money to cut emissions. And it's going to cost more or less the same money or more to do negative emissions. So there's no reason to think that won't be politically harder. So I think negative emissions are useful principally uh, in the near term for making uh, uh, carbon-free fuels, but in the long term, once we've driven emissions down towards zero. So how does solar geoengineering fit in? I think solar geoengineering most sensibly fits in to carve the top off that risk profile. That's the key thing. And that means it needs to grow, start relatively soon, grow slowly, and then fade away slowly. And that growing slowly is, is key because it means you don't start this all at once. So some people think of solar geoengineering as something we do in an emergency where you hit a big red button and turn it on. I think that would almost never make sense because you can't learn your way up. In a scheme like this, you can start slowly, adding a little bit more of whatever it is, watching very carefully for side effects, maybe figuring out something else you want to add, and, 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 and learn your way up in a slow way. I think if we ever do it, that's the way that makes sense.